You know what, let me start from scratch because I fucking hate the previous video that I did. I recorded for 40 minutes and I thought to myself, what beginner would listen to it? You know, it's a beginner. It should be very precise, uh, very concise recommendations and not a 40 minute discussion. So fuck me really. Um, anyway, training for beginners. I want this video to be uh, very effective for beginners. We'll discuss very rapidly about who's considered a beginner, what should beginners focus on, how should beginners structure the training, and we will build a training program for from scratch at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Uh, a lot of people consider myself to produce a lot of content for advanced practitioners. I really hope to be relevant for beginners as well. I think although my level of performance is relatively high, or you would consider it relatively high level of performance, but I think and I hope that the maturity, the mentality that I bring to the table will be relevant for all level of uh, advancements. Uh, you can do, if you do 10 push-ups, that's, that's your thing, you do just 10 push-ups, but you take some of the principles, the guidelines that I provide about how you should treat your training, how you should log your training, how nutrition can help you uh, feel better and, and promote, uh, uh, you know, progress and so on. I think it's relevant and I hope it to be. And uh, I do want to make this video more geared toward the beginner um, in, all, in all variables. So who's considered a beginner? Beginner is someone who is able to progress rapidly. He is able to progress on a daily basis. Each consecutive workout, you'll be able to add repetition, add weight, add time. So that's actually the most accurate definition if I will have to give one. Um, and the intermediate who, who is someone who is able to progress on a weekly basis. So he can only add one rep once a week. And advanced only, uh, only can progress once a month. So it's, it takes him a lot of time to even add one repetition or one kilogram to his main uh, exercise. So a beginner is able to progress rapidly. And uh, therefore the term newbie gains uh, uh, rose. And rose, is that a word? It, is that like the best term of a rise? Anyway, um, you're able to add a lot of muscle mass, get strong fast. It's good thing to have because it will motivate you. So if you start, start from zero push-ups and you will end up with 20 push-ups, that's fairly motivating. If you actually added five kilograms of muscle mass, that it's something that is feasible within one year for a beginner, it will actually alter your appearance and the way that you look at yourself and feel and your confidence level, which is all good thing. Because I think that the most important, let, let me, this is my eraser, the most, I'm already crazy at this point because it's past 40 minutes of recording. The most important thing for a beginner is building habits. Building habits. I don't care what you do. I want you to do it. I don't care how you structure your training. I want you to do something that you can commit to. And if it's, I, am, I prefer doing uh, five minutes or 10 minutes every day than having a congested one hour, hour of training session twice a week, then you do that. If you prefer to have congested training, if you can only train infrequently and uh, because I don't know, you're busy, kids, some, I don't know, but you think that you can stick to two to three sessions of one hour each week, then you do that. The most important thing is to build the habit. If you want to have strength, you, have, you want to have muscle mass, you want to be strong, you want to appear, uh, um, you know, more lean, more jacked, more whatever. And I think that everyone, everyone wants to. Like deep down, everyone wants to. Um, then you should focus on 
making uh, habits, building your habits, making a training, making the practice a, a lifestyle. Anyone knows that friend who got, you know, he trained hard for a year, smashed himself, went to the gym seven days a week, actually started to look significantly better. Everyone noticed it, but he's not training right now. And he's possibly at, at you know, 0, 0.0 having to start all the way if he would have. He doesn't because he doesn't train because he didn't build habits. Training was all, always a, a thing that happened to him, like an outside thing from his lifestyle. He only managed to train once he had time, but guess what? Life happens and you have more responsibilities. So if you relied on having eight hours of spare time because you're, you're unemployed, then you're not really making habits for the long term, okay? So some people are early risers, they train at 5 a.m. If that's your thing, do that. Five, some people are night owls, they train at night, do that. If you are the, I prefer having 10 minutes uh, twice a day, then two hour session twice a week, then do that. Build the habit, it's the most important thing. I don't care about progressive overload. I don't care about having a certain training split, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And the good thing is that you don't really have to have a solid strength training program in order to make progress before progress stalls, before you hit plateaus, before you, you stop adding muscle mass and so on. It, you, you can make progress doing almost anything provided it is, provided it is with high intensity in your first one or two years of training, okay? So when I started training, so I, not a lot of people know, but I was recruited to the army, which was already more than a decade ago, weighing 58. So right now I weigh between 80 and 85 of mostly lean physique, lean mass but I was recruited weighing only 58 at the age of 18. I was a skater. I was outdoors uh, multiple hours each day skating uh, burning some calories and eating cereals. I had noodle arms. Too bad I don't really have a lot of photos or videos to show you because I don't like to document stuff and I always throw away my previous computer uh, when I buy a new one. I'm too lazy. Uh, to back it up. So I was weak, I was uh, small, skinny, uh, I, I'm 170 centimeters uh, tall for anyone who wants to know. Um, and my thing at the army was that I did almost before every meal, so before mostly lunch and dinner, I did some push-ups. Maybe it was some abs once in a while, but it was very, very frequently, and it really helped me uh, build habits for whatever I, you know, right now I'm doing Iron Cross and Maltese and stuff like that. I didn't think about those exercises uh, back then. I would just, you know, how I want to train, I want to get strong. I got motivated by uh, feeling lighter, being able to perform more push-ups and then I noticed that, that my chest got bigger and so on. And then I was already known as someone who trains. Uh, I was that guy and that uh, more, even more shaped me towards, you know, uh, training and, and, and being committed. But it was all from doing a, a, a two minute plank before lunch. And then it was, um, three sets of whatever I had with push-ups before dinner. And a lot of people, uh, Israeli folks that listen to this video, they know what I talk about because that's how you train in the army uh, more often than not. It is short, extremely short sessions, uh, uh, but very frequently. And that caught me. I got committed. Uh, I saw progress and then I didn't want to stop. 
Uh, so whatever helps you build the habit, do that. That's the most important thing. And once I had that, my training looked uh, differently. I had, so I already training, and then I, you know, start, started Googling, how should I structure the training, how to build bigger chest, how to build bigger back, basically what everyone as a beginner uh, do. Uh, so I had like chest workout, back workout and leg workout but I did everything like twice a week so it's it's six training days six days on one day off and basically every day had a uh, four to six exercises maybe even more than that so a, a, a common chest day for me back then was a wide push-up, narrow push-up, tricep push-up, and dips. Okay, doing maybe four sets of each. A common back workout back then was wide grip pull-ups, supinated chin-ups, and a, a wide rows, and one-arm rows. So very similar, but slight tweaks in variation. It didn't really matter. I was just, I had two goals in mind. Two things that I aim for. One is let's train enough to what I believed was uh, um, efficient, was effective, and let's train hard. So intensity. Okay? Those were the two things that I relied on. I didn't know that whether my program is perfect and I changed it a lot but I relied, or relied on training enough and training hard. And everything works at the first one or two years of training, uh, which is about the time frame that I consider people to still be beginners. So who is considered a beginner? I talked about the progression rate, but a more binary black and white answer would be if you are not training for at least one year consecutively. So not two months on, two months off, six months on, six months off. No, if you're training that on and off, you're still a beginner. Doesn't matter how much time uh, in total you accumulated. It is the time consecutively that you did regimented structured strength training. So if you have at least one year, possibly two years, if you, uh, you're still a beginner. If you have more than two years of structured consecutive strength training, then you're most probably not a beginner already. Why is that? Your body got accustomed to training. He got accustomed to a lot of stress, load, exercise. So it is harder for him to now break the homeostasis. You have to be something, you have to do something much harder or longer or heavier in order to really push that uh, um, homeostasis. Uh, your body is already accustomed because you have one or two years of strengthening under your belt. So that's where progression rate starts to decrease and margin for improvements start to decrease as you progress. So that's what is uh, generally speaking a beginner and there are some standards out there that uh, uh, are provided to really try to spot yourself within a certain criteria uh, so let's say if you don't have one time body weight barbell back squat, then you're still a beginner because most likely if you're not able to do that, you haven't trained long enough and you haven't built muscle mass, which is also something that is tied to your level of advancement. So you are not likely to be uh, inter intermediate uh, anyway. So maybe you're training for three years, but you don't have body weight barbell back squat. There is less chance of you being uh, under regimented, constructed, effective strength training. Because if you were, you would surpass one time, by the way, barbell back squat. Um, what should beginners focus on? So like I said, you should focus on building the habit, but like what should you build habit on? What should you focus on as building habit? Two things are, uh, in my opinion, the most important um, for each level of advancement, but especially to focus on as a beginner that will have the most amount of impact, the most bang for your buck, 
This is what you should do. Uh, the first thing is um, body composition, and it, it is not in order of importance. Uh, both are equally as important. Body composition. There are few things in life that will help you uh, uh, increase your uh, uh, probability of, you know, having lifespan, quality of life, longevity, than actually just reaching a fairly lean physique. What is a fairly lean physique? Male and females have different standards. Uh, male should thrive for having about 12 to 16 body fat percent. And females should have 20 to uh, 24, let's say, body fat percent. So the equivalent uh, of female uh, body fat is about eight digits higher. And having just that uh, level of leanness will have a high impact on your life. Uh, and also, since we're talking about calisthenics, it will help you with calisthenics because if you're extremely overweight, or obese, everything will be very hard for you. You will not be very mobile. You will fatigue quicker. You will not be able to run and so on. Just quality of life significantly diminishes. You don't have to be 10% body fat. It is extremely unrealistic for 99% unrealistic for of the population. Don't focus on that. That is something that is realistic and also sustainable. You can maintain this body fat percent forever, indefinitely. The second thing is, uh, is strength training. You should focus on body composition and strength. Obviously, they are tied together. So body composition is being uh, fairly lean and also having decent amount of muscle mass. You will have decent amount of muscle mass provided you have a sound strength training program. Uh, and also, you know, taking care of nutrition will help you with uh, body f reaching a, a, a nice body fat percentage, but taking care of nutrition will also help you with your uh, strength goals and your, you know, you'll build more muscle mass because you eat more pro protein, you eat, you, eat, you eat generally better better sources of foods, whole sources of food, it will help also your body composition. They are tied together. And everything, provided you have strength training and decent body composition, or provided you are thriving to have those two goals, will be taken care of. So the magazines, the commercials, the TV commercials, they've been lying to you. The person that they show running, that has sick physique, muscular, female or male, that you desire to have, He's not running. You want, to, you want to see how people that run look? Google marathon athlete and see how thin and uh, atrophied they are. They are skinny and it is extremely non-desirable, unesthetically pleasing if you ask me, but that's you know, a question of maybe appealing, uh, but also unhealthy. Uh, they, that people that you see on the TV commercial and the magazine, cover of magazine, they just go to the gym. That's what they do. So if you have decent body composition and you are strong, you'll be able to run 5K no problem, even if you don't run at all. Okay? Uh, you'll be able to swim a 1K even if you don't swim at all. You'll be very inefficient. It will cost you a lot of energy. You will guess out, but you will swim for 1K because you're in decent shape. And that is what happens when you have decent body composition and you're strong. It carries over to everything else. If you do full range of motion, if you do proper strength training, you'll also be mobile. So provided you'll be taking care of the body composition and strength, everything else will improve. And that's what you have to focus on. So here I already provided you with body fat percentage goal. I think that you should strive for that. Few things in life will help you with quality of life uh, and so on as reaching that body fat percentage along having those strength goals that I'm about to offer you here as a beginner. And they are different in, in multiple ways to what I recommend for intermediates and advanced and so on. 20 push-ups. If you can't do 20 push-ups, you should work on your push-ups. Uh, just being able to push your body in space 20 times, so for relatively high repetition, 
So you will get also some strength endurance, you will get conditioned, you, you will practice a lot of repetitions just by the fact that you're doing more overall work. Your work capacity will increase by doing higher rep exercises, higher rep sets, and uh, it will help you with uh, hypertrophy. You will, you will get bigger arms, you will get bigger deltoids, bigger chest, which is um, what any beginner wants really because it, it is a lot of time under tension. And generally beginners are not able to really exert themselves in one repetition or five repetitions. They have to do a lot of repetition to get fatigued. So I will opt for higher repetition and higher time under tension recommendations as beginner goals. 20 repetition, 10 pull-ups, 50 full range air squats, and I will also add 60 seconds, 60 seconds, wall supported handstand hold. So, and, and also, yeah, that, that's it, that's it. So you have upper body push and pull, you have lower body strength, and you have the like overhead, which is also important for mobility because a lot of people, sedentary people work on computer, they get cathartic. It's also, it just happens naturally as uh, you progress in age, you get kyphotic, you lose a lot of that overhead mobility, it's very important. So you have different ranges of motion, uh, lower body, upper body, push, pull, uh, endurance. So you get conditioned, you get strong, you will most likely add a lot of muscle mass because you're doing high repetition stuff. You're not too narrowly focused on primarily strength, it's still balanced fairly well-rounded, these are extremely beginner entry-level goals that I think that you should have before, you know, looking anywhere else. Uh, some people obviously are exception to the rule, so a lot of extremely high advanced powerlifter, for example, they have two and a half times body weight bench press, but they're overweight, they're obese, so they might not be able to perform 20 push-ups. But that recommendation will be relevant for 99% of the population. So if you're extremely obese, yeah, maybe it's not relevant, but it will be relevant for most people, and I think that you should thrive for it. The combination of reaching that with a decent uh, body fat percentage, you will look better, you will move better, you will feel better, your blood work will improve, your quality of life uh, will increase in all domains of life. It will also transfer over to your career. You will be a better, you'll be better at work, you'll be more focused, you'll be more sharp, you'll sleep better at night, you'll be a better, um, a better partner for your family, for your wife, for your husband, for your friends. Uh, you'll sleep better, you look better, you will attract more people, you will attract more business to you. Everything will improve in your life by working on two things. Okay, let's move on. Uh, that's how you should, what you should focus on. How should you structure your training also comes back to that habit, what you prefer. If you prefer training seven days a week, do that. If you prefer doing two days a week, but uh, one hour sessions and here you maybe this person trains for 20 minutes a day okay so you do that what will help you build habit the habits that's how you should structure your training and you should take it seriously you should really commit to yourself do that regardless of how you feel because you are still not able to know how to modulate training modify training and you still don't know how Missing one session will affect long term your uh, output in fitness and in training, okay? A lot of people are like, eh, I will skip this session, but that, that builds a habit of skipping a session. So you're trying to be committed and make this a lifestyle thing, building habits to train, but now you're missing session. So it's the other way around. And in six months time, you will probably not train at all because you allowed yourself, you allowed that skipping a session like a thing. So you should structure your training really the way that it will help you to build a, a training as a lifestyle, 
okay? Just being the, the one who takes the stairs and, and completes the workout, even when everything else is doing, you know, their chores and you're doing workouts as a way to meditate, release stress while people want to watch TV. So you'll be that guy. Um, I really want, I hope this video helps. Really, I really hope this video helps for beginners. And not for the one who wants the planche and front lever. You, you, you need me, but you don't need this video. Building a beginner program. So, beginner program, I want you to train full body. Every time that you train, I think it should be full body. And I want you to train frequently. So, most people will say you have to have recovery between muscle groups. Every, okay, but... Your training session is still not highly stressful. I prefer that you will build the habit, that you'll do something almost daily, almost every day, uh, that you will build the habit instead of just taking so many days off uh, and, and taking things too seriously to begin with. Full body, uh, I want it to be four to five days a week. So it's more frequently than I currently train, believe it or not. But I can take advantage of the fact that each session is grueling, is so stressful that my body has to have 48 to 72 hours to recover from. But that's not you. I used to train seven days a week when I was a beginner, maybe more than that. Especially for calisthenic athletes, you have to have frequency. Why? Handstands, for example, the only people who actually have 60 second decent handstand, they practice it daily. Ask them, they practice it daily. It really responds good responds well, excuse me, to frequency. So it's important for calisthenic athletes to do a lot of frequency. Uh, let's have, uh, okay, Monday, Tuesday, seven days a week, right? You also have seven days a week? I have, I think that you do as well. Friday, um, and Saturday, and Sunday, okay? Saturday, sun seven days a week. We'll rest the Sunday, We'll also throw in another rest day on um, Thursday. So you have two rest days, but I want you to do something full body every day. So um, you will uh, squat, bodyweight squat, push-ups, and rows. Don't ask me how many repetitions, don't ask me how many sets. I don't really care. I want that you train those movements. I want you to train those movements hard, so high intensity, go close to failure, fatigue, to the point that you can't perform many more reps uh, and do them and stick to that routine, okay? So I don't really care. Just do squats, do push-ups and do rows. If you want an answer, I will do three sets, three productive close to failure or up to failure sets. Okay, squats, push-ups, rows, it's full body. Here, Tuesday, we will do handstand and we will run. I consider running some sort of a lower body activity uh, and handstand, uh, wall supported, obviously. Again, you, if you ask how many sets, you can do three sets. If you, if you ask how much you should run, just run up to the point that you're fairly exhausted, but not 100% effort. And you don't, people, same thing with strength training, people like overdo the running. They think that their first run should be a 5K or a 10K. Just run for 1K, like 1K run, 2K run, it's fine. And again, here, let's do a full body uh, workout, but change the exercises. So we will do pull-ups instead of rows, a different pulling exercise. We will do dips and uh, we will do like um, a deadlift or any hinge exercise. So deadlift, single-legged deadlift, um, you can do, uh, yeah, those are basically it. You can do it even, you know, single-legged bodyweight deadlift. I don't mind. You can do glute bridge for your posterior chain. It will strengthen your hamstring, your back and your glute. Do some hinge movement. So a lower body exercise, but that strengthen the posterior chain, 
the squat strengthen more the anterior chain, the quadriceps. Um, so same thing, very similar. And here we have a rest day. Let's do more handstand. And maybe here we will sprint. So if this is a moderate run with a steady pace, this is more structured like strength training. Go for five sprints of 20 seconds and rest for one to two minutes, repeat. And handstand again, more for overhead mobility, overhead strength, endurance, conditioning. You will strengthen your joints, it's important. And uh, Saturday you can do another uh, full body session. We can do a squat, squat, but you can do single leg, single leg squat. So a pistol squat variation, step ups. So you can step up on a box and go down. Bulgarian split squat. So elevating your back foot and doing squats. So single leg squat and we already had push-ups and dips. We can do some pike push-ups, which is basically like an overhead press. Uh, you can modify everything. Push-ups you can do on an incline, on a sofa, on a chair, uh, you know, anything. Rows, again, you can do on an incline. You don't really have to have rows. I can take that, boom, I can pull myself. I don't care, you're, you're thinking too much. You're a beginner. Just train frequently, train frequently okay so whether you decided your frequency is two to three you know three sessions a week or seven sessions a week stick to that frequency and train intensely i don't care about the rest that's it every time you train train seriously train hard and commit to the routine to the amount of frequency that you decided uh, in uh, you know in advance pike push-ups and and here we can do uh, chin-ups. So we had pull-ups, uh, we had rows, now we'll do chin-ups. So pull-ups is wider grip, it is pronated with your back of the hand uh, towards you. Chin-ups is supinated inside of the palm towards you uh, and also narrower grip in general, shoulder width apart or even slightly within shoulder width apart. I again, use the feet, feet support. You can jump up to a pull-up and hold any variation, just work this pattern in any way, shape or form, frequently and intensely. Um, boom, and another rest day. And look, excuse me, this is an amazing program. You run, you sprint, you, you do lower body in three different shapes. It's bilateral, but also unilateral, doing single leg exercises. It's squatting, so anterior chain, but also deadlifting, hinging, posterior chain. So covering all the lower body muscle groups, basically. You're doing push-ups, uh, but also pike push-ups, so overhead, but also dips. So different pushing variation. You will cover uh, 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 shoulders, posterior uh, shoulder, um, anterior deltoid, post uh, side deltoid, lateral deltoid, whatever, chest triceps and uh, you will do rows so it's more horizontal pulling it's more upper back traps rhomboids middle back whatever you want but you also pulling overhead again for mobility but also more for the lat that wing shaped muscle groups very aesthetically pleasing important you're running you're also resting you're doing handstand you're doing high reps you're mixing it up regarding repetition range i already talked about sets if you want to really ask me about number of sets, do four to three sets of each. Both will be fine, okay? If you want to ask me about how many repetitions, just do, let's say you're doing push-up that day, but really you can only do two push-ups, okay? That's your set, two push-ups. If you want to, you know, stick to a certain rep range and you only do, that's your thing, you do eight to 12, you prefer higher repetition, then you will have to find an incline to make it easier so you can do more reps. But I want to make it simple for you. You know, if you only have one chin up, that's your set. If you only have one pull up, that's your set. If you can sprint very slow, I don't care. That's your sprint. That's training for beginners.